OK, the Six Nations is back and it's back with a bang. And we're joined by uh, our rugby ambassador for the Six Nations, John Newcomb. John, two big days ahead of us on Saturday and Sunday. And it all starts in Dublin on Saturday. Ireland taking on the, uh, the reigning champions, Wales. What a match this promises to be. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many times you've seen five Six Nations matches, however far you go back. In my case, certainly five nations. Um, it, you can't help but get excited about what's in store, especially last season. Um, we were denied fans, but we weren't denied excitement. There were tries aplenty, uh, and obviously Wales uh, won the title. I think the odds were something like 12 to 1, so an outsider winning last year. This year, I think um, it might stack up in terms of the favourites, uh, the favourites being uh, France, Ireland and England. And it's important in a Six Nations Championship, of course, to get off to a fast start. Momentum is everything. And I could see Ireland uh, fitting the bill against uh, Wales and uh, then moving on to Paris in round two with a win under their belts. Uh, Ireland are on a real roll at the moment. They're playing with confidence. They've got a well-balanced, well-coached team under Andy Farrell. They've adapted their game. Johnny Sexton, a real talisman at 10, is back. He's uh, fit, which is crucial because uh, there's still question marks about the uh, understudies to uh, Sexton. Um, they've got some of the best players in the world at the moment. You'd have to have Furlong, uh, Ty Furlong uh, in any world-class team, wouldn't you, at tight head? You'd have James Ryan possibly there in the second row. Caelan Doris, Josh DeFleer and Jack Conan, they'd probably make up the back row themselves. So I think uh, Ireland have the strength in the pack, certainly... Uh, both in the starting pack and from the bench, to uh, give Wales a difficult ride there. I don't think Wales will be as bad as everyone makes out with their injury uh, absentees. Uh, they've still got plenty of quality, and they've got one of the best finishes in the game in Lewis Rezamit. So uh, 14 points on the handicap might be, uh, might be asking a little bit too much for Ireland to cover. OK, so Ireland to win, Wales to cover the handicap. Give us a, a try score that we should have a few quid on Saturday. Well, I mentioned uh, Reece Samet. I saw him score an absolute worldie against Newcastle at the weekend, something like 70 metres uh, with virtually his first touch of the ball. But he's a little bit too obvious. If you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, Kelleher, the hooker, he's not adverse to the try line. And uh, as we all know, hookers like their meat pies, both on and off the pitch. Uh, it's become a real trend at the back of rolling malls of late. Excellent. OK, by the time that finishes, we'll be uh, looking forward to uh, the Calcutta Cup. Of course, Scotland went to Twickenham last year and won. They're home to England at Murrayfield on Saturday. What are we expecting? Well, plenty of kidology, as we'd expect, from Eddie Jones in the week and an experimental and youthful lineup as well. My hunch is that this, this England team, without the leadership of Farrell, without the leadership of Laws, will be a little bit green. Scotland away on the first weekend when you're playing with experimental combinations doesn't add up to an England win for me. Scotland have been improving and improving. They'll always find a game to lose, so they won't win the championship, but they'll be fired up for this one in front of a full house at Murrayfield. And I just think that England might just lose their way on the field and uh, Scotland will edge it. See, Scotland are getting a three-point head start and the handicap. Would you worry about the handicap or would you expect Scotland to win? Yeah, no, I won't worry about it at all. I, I really am confident that Scotland can kick off with, with a win. It, it's normally a fairly cagey game, like the Ireland-Wales game might be quite cagey, certainly in the first half. Um, I think the last eight games at Murrayfield, the last eight Calcutta Cup clashes in Edinburgh, have ended with a match being less than 40 points in total. So there's not going to be a lot in it. But uh, yeah, no, if anything, I'd make Scotland minus three. So I'd go Scotland outright. OK, great. Traditionally, as you said, the head-to-heads have been tight. It's not uh, traditionally a, a fixture that produces plenty of points. So are we going to get many tries? And, and if we are to back a, a try score, who should that be? Well, just looking at the Scotland uh, record, disproportionately, centres get their fair share of tries. I think something like six in the last 10 meetings. Um, crunching the numbers a little bit earlier on. Apologies if I got that one a little bit wrong, but... I certainly know that uh, the Scottish midfield is uh, ripe for tries. And when you look at Elliot Daly playing at centre, he hasn't played a lot of rugby recently due to injury. There's been question marks about his defensive capabilities in midfield before. Chris Harris is a battering ram, but he's a stranger to the try line. I think it's 14 games without a try at test level. So I'd look to his midfield partner, which could well be Sam Johnson, 
who's a seven to one anytime try scorer. So Johnson, I think, has got a Calcutta Cup try before. Uh, that was in the 38 all game down in Twickenham. I think he could double up on that. Uh, as for England, Max Malin's his favourite to be an anytime try scorer, and you can see why. If they are to get a try, I wouldn't be surprised if it was him who got his name on the score sheet. Excellent. So we're at Scotland all the way. And then we move on to Sunday. It's in Paris. Last time uh, France and Italy met, France won by 40 points in Rome. The handicap is 35. Are they going to be able to cover that handicap? Because they are outright favourites to win the Six Nations. They are, but they've had a bit of a disruptive build-up with COVID, with the injuries, lack of game time for some key players. Antoine Dupont, the uh, World Rugby Player of the Year, uh, looked a little bit rusty by uh, all accounts, according to my French sources, when playing for Toulouse the other weekend. He's a class act, though, so uh, I'm sure he'll be fine, and France will be fine. They'll they'll get close to that handicap, whether they'll get over it. I wouldn't be that confident. My only worry would be that um, because of the uh, disruptive build-up, they'll be a little bit rusty early on. Uh, Italy will be pumped up in the first 20 minutes or so, but we saw last year that Italy can drop off for large periods of games, particularly as the match wears on. Their fitness and the physicality of the opposition takes its toll. So I'd be a little bit nervous because I don't think it, perhaps a couple of scores in it at half time and then France to pull away. Whether they'll run out of time, though, to cover that 35 points, I wouldn't like to say. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably steer clear of the handicap on that one. Uh, you know, but you can obviously uh, back France to win at home. Uh, there's, there's three things that are certain in life, and that's death taxes and an Italian defeat. They haven't won in 32 Six Nations games, stretching back to 2015, and I don't think that run will end here. Um, if you're looking for any time try scorers, Mavaka, the hookers in a rich uh, try scoring vein of form, gets on the back of those rolling malls, so he could, could be a good bet. And Damien Pinot, I expect a big championship from him. Uh, whether he plays in midfield or on the wing, he's uh, he's in good nick for Clermont at the moment, and uh, he should carve open that Azuri defence, which is uh, pretty um, uh, not exactly watertight. It's pretty porous uh, from what we've seen in the past. Okay, so France all the way. Let's look at the outright bang in the Six Nations because last year it was Wales, Ireland, or Wales, France, Ireland, and Scotland in that order. France are favourites. Ireland are second favourites. Who is your fancy to be Six Nations champions in 2022? Well, it's all pointing towards France uh, because they're hosting the World Cup in 2023. They were bridesmaids in 2020 to England, uh, losing out on points difference. Bridesmaids again in 2021, losing out to Wales. My worry with them is that you always manage to find one banana skin to trip up on. Um, and Ireland, with the confidence that they've got, I think they'll win all three of their home games, which are against Wales, Scotland and Italy. And the reason they're third favourites is because they've got the two toughest assignments away from home. But I don't think there'll be a Grand Slam winner this year. I think four wins will be enough. And I'd back this Ireland team to pick up a win either at Twickenham or at the Stade de France. And that might just be enough for them to win the overall championship, uh, but without a Grand Slam. Uh, yeah, that would be definitely a recommendation of mine. It's going to be a really competitive championship. All the teams had a decent um, autumn nation series. And I think uh, they're all capable, certainly the top four anyway, of nicking wins off each other. 